Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everybody to the June 2nd um, budget hearing and regular board meeting. Before beginning, can we all please stand to say the pledge together? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and it is for liberty and justice for all. So we'll, we will begin with our annual budget hearing and regular board meeting. This is June 2nd, 2020. Um, just to let everybody know that this meeting is being recorded as all our board meetings are. Okay, so our first presentation is the annual budget hearing. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Egan. Okay, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I believe I've successfully uh, shared my screen with you. Just give me a thumbs up if you can see the uh, Budget presentation. All right, that's a good sign. So tonight is our eighth meeting uh, discussing the 2021 school budget. We began back in December on December 17th. We typically will hold six budget work sessions. We actually added a seventh this year in, in May uh, to have some additional conversation on the budget. The board officially adopted the budget back on May 20th, and uh, tonight's meeting is actually a legal requirement, and it's called the budget hearing. The proposed budget is $96,510,404. It's a 2.8 budget to budget increase and a tax levy increase of 3.27. And what this budget does is it supports and maintains everything that we currently have in Kings Park, all of our extracurriculars, all of our programs, um, academics. The one big add in this budget are additional Chromebooks for students in grades seven through 12. We have a one-to-one -one initiative, which this past year uh, we went with grade eight and we were looking to expand that for next year, but we've increased that expansion to be grades seven through 12, uh, which is, is a, a decision that was made not completely knowing what the fall is gonna look like in terms of uh, instruction and wanting to be able to best support our students to the greatest degree possible. We also have some key safety and security things in the budget. Um, the remaining elementary vestibules are, are in this budget and that work should get done this summer. We have two large school buses and a van in the budget and the entire budget and, and all, of, all of these things and the maintenance is within the New York State tax cap limitations. Now, when, when we take a look and, and explain uh, the budget and, and where we are financially, during the first seven budget work sessions, we work to figure out what's gonna be in the expenditure side of the budget. And this gold bar represents $96,510,404 worth of, of wants, which for the most part are maintaining all of our programs that we currently have. And then what we look to do on the right-hand side is we, we look to balance our wants with revenue. We have some other revenue in the form of um, facilities use and rent from new beginnings and a couple of things of that nature. We have state aid, which is roughly 20% of our budget and the tax levy, which is the piece of the budget that our residents support. And the green box is capped and our legal limit 
currently, which is a multi-step formula, is roughly 3.27%. And we are able to present a, a balanced budget and again, maintain our current programs and services. Um, the, the one thing that, that's a little bit of a question mark, and I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute, is that our state aid package is somewhat subject to change later in the fiscal year. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on that in a moment. These are our, our revenue projections. Again, you'll see our, our budget, about $96.5 million. Uh, one of the things that, that we will be doing in next year's budget is um, devoting some of our reserve money to the revenue side on the debt service area of things, uh, almost $400,000, $395,000. 100,000 from the ERS retirement reserve and 75,000 from the uh, workers' compensation reserve. So we are pulling out of our bank account a little bit to make sure that we can maintain things um, that our students are currently betting, benefiting from this year and, and keep that in our budget for next year. You will notice that our total aid from the state is actually a little lower than it was um, this, is, this is our aid current year. This is our projected aid for next year. It, it is lower. Um, and that was based on the April 1st state aid runs that we received from, from the governor. Um, typically aid will go up a little bit year to year. Again, in this case so far it went down a little bit. And I'll talk about where we project aid going as we get further into the school year. Uh, if you look at our budgets historically, uh, we have been relatively frugal here in Kings Park. The 2.8% increase that we project in budget to budget isn't the highest, it's not the lowest, it, it's somewhere in between over the last uh, bunch of years back to 2010. And what this will look like for the average taxpayer is roughly about $24.43 a month uh, increase on average. Now, the contingent budget, which is the budget that has to be adopted if the budget fails twice, um, one, one of the things that we may be faced with is a, a revote may not be possible given the time constraints and um, the fact that a revote would need to happen before uh, July 1st. The, um, the, the really detrimental part of a contingent budget is that the, um, the, the levy would get reduced by $2.33 million. So if, if, I, if I take you back in time a little bit, if, the green bar is $2.3 million less, and we get hit in state aid mid-year, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, we actually, it's actually a double hit, and could be really, really detrimental to student program, um, which is something that um, I'm sure we're, we're all worried about. So again, that contingent budget not only hits us in the green box by $2.3 million. Um, but also if our aid is subject to change later in the school year, that would be a, a double whammy, so to speak. The, the governor with our current fiscal uh, situation in New York State has indicated that mid-year reductions might be necessary. New York has lived through this scenario before both in 2008-2009 in the form of the gap elimination adjustment and back in the early 90s with uh, Governor Cuomo Sr. The 2021 New York State budget permits the governor to make adjustments to school aid during four measurement periods. And the next measurement period is, gonna, is coming up. It's gonna end June 30th. The federal stimulus money is super important to New York. 
Um, that bill passed in, in one, one uh, branch of the legislature, but has stalled in the Senate. If, um, you know, call Washington, if you know your, your senator well, and you want to express your displeasure in the fact that that federal stimulus bill is sitting in the Senate, feel free to do so. Um, it's my understanding that um, that stimulus bill would, would bring a significant amount of money to New York for local governments, and that would help out school districts as well. But given that we may be looking at mid-year cuts, the, the board and I have looked very closely at what a 10 or a 20% reduction in state aid might look like, uh, which is roughly a million or $2 million uh, reduction in aid. So we have built in some flexibility into the budget to um, make reductions in response to any aid that the governor might hold back from us. Um, and we've been very, very careful in, in planning that out. And again, trying to protect our student programs, extracurricular activities, athletics, art and music, things, things of that nature. Um, that was our, our primary focus. Okay, so this year's voting is like no other that we've ever experienced. We've always had absentee ballots. Typically, in a in a in an elect in a um, a budget vote, we might have forty or fifty absentee ballots. This year, all voting by executive order is by absentee ballot. Uh, we we get a file from Suffolk County Board of Elections, and we mailed out ballots. Um, we actually uh, expected them to be in mailboxes towards the end of last week. They hit mailboxes, uh, my understanding is on Monday. Most of our residents started receiving their absentee ballot. Voters can either mail their ballot back to us using the postage paid envelope that was provided, or if the ballot is, is received and residents are worried that they might not be able to mail it back to us in time, they can simply drop it off to the San Remo Administrative Building where, where I am currently at 180 Lawrence Road in Kings Park. And that drop off needs to happen on Tuesday, June 9th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'll have a lock box in place and residents will be buzzed in and they can place their ballot right in that, that lock box. But again, we need all ballots by 5 p.m. on June 9th. Unfortunately, um, the law is very clear. There are no exceptions to that 5 p.m. deadline. We're then going to move the ballots over to Kings Park High School, and we will have uh, canvassing over there. Later in the agenda, we have um, some folks who will be assisting us with that canvassing. Um, again, that'll happen after 5 p.m. on June 9th, and a link will be posted to the school district website um, if you'd like to watch us uh, open ballots and, and count them, you're, you're more than welcome to do that. And that is the end of the... Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Egan. As you know, um, this was the budget hearing. We already adopted it. Ballots are out. Over everything. Um, does anybody have any questions as to the procedure that Dr. Ap Dr. Egan just outlined for us pertaining to the ballots? Okay. Okay, I think we're good to go. Thank you very much, Dr. Riga, and also um, our district clerk, Patty Capobianco, I know has been quite busy these past few days, um, getting everything, answering questions. Um, anybody who's on that still has any questions,
can always contact her by email or the district um, phone, contact her directly, which I know she's taking many calls. So thank you. How about if I do have a question though, regarding not the ballots though? Is it regarding the um, budget presentation? Well, actually it's regarding the budget. If the budget doesn't pass, in fact pass, and if situations okay, don't. I just, have, I just have to ask you if you can identify yourself to the district clerk. Yes, Melissa Lair. Okay. Okay. So and I do, I do have a question regarding the, uh, if in the event that the budget passes and things apparently don't improve statewide and the students are forced to stay at home and do remote learning, how is that going with the sports then and all these curricular activities that we are apparently looking to vote yes and we obviously don't want those to be, um, you know, get rid of. How is that going to be affected with the, the budget then if they don't go back to school and all these activities are no longer are null and voided? So how is that going to affect with the budget? So now we're looking at a contingency of that we are going to be maybe going back to school and having all these activities that we're so much looking to vote for. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, is if in the event things don't improve and the state does not allow in school learning in the fall, then that's going to be a big, that's a big question, I think, on a lot of residents' heads is how is that going to be affected now? We voted yes for the budget, and now we don't have any of these activities. So now you're going to have a surplus. Correct? What, what we can do in the fall is either going to be a function of uh, the governor's executive order or local um, Department of Health regulations. Mm -hmm. um, we, we certainly want kids back in school. We certainly want uh, extracurriculars operating. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and we're going to be keeping a, a close eye on what we can legally do and, and what, we, what we can't and building in right. various contingency plans for the fall. Right. We, we will likely have um, some expenditures that we, that we did not anticipate. Um, for, Can you elaborate on what those expenditures would be? Um, yeah, if you could let me continue. Oh, sure. So, um, so for example, you know, we're in the process of taking a look at, for health and safety reasons, the various PPE that we might need to have on hand and um, how uh, temperature scanning might occur, for example. So um, if you look at reopening in other parts of the country or other parts of the world, um, taking adult and student temperature becomes important. Um, those devices are, are not cheap and can run upwards of $2,500 a piece. Um, so that, if, if you would have asked me uh, 10, 10 days ago if I thought that that would be a possibility for the fall, I probably would have told you, no, you're crazy, but um, you know, things, things like that may be more the norm for the fall, but I don't know. Um, we are planning not only in Kings Park, but, but also regionally and on a Long Island and on a statewide basis, uh, sharing information and plans. Um, and we will have a, uh, a district committee that's going to be getting up and running very shortly where we will, we will be looking at, in particular, the fall and planning for on various scenarios. So we may, we may have some expenses that we did not anticipate, but we, we hope that we can run everything that we want to run for students. If things in particular don't run, there may be some savings that might be connected with those items. Um, but we also know that the governor might reduce our, our aid. So what we tried to do was we tried to build as much flexibility into our budget so that we could tackle these various scenarios um, if needed. Okay, but with that being said then, and then if you're, okay, let's just say hypothetically you have to buy these, these um, thermometers. Are you looking to get like full body scan machines? Or are you looking to get more like 
the uh, thermometers that you like a point and shoot. So like no contact type of thermometers. Um, what would be your great, idea? Great question. That's probably a conversation for, for another day. Um, okay. Those are the conversations that we will be having this summer. Um, okay. Of course, we will be encouraging parents to take their, their children's temperature before they put them on the bus in the morning. Oh, I agree with you, but it just that the reason why I said that is because you're stating that if there is additional funds, if the school goes back into session and there is a surplus, your anticipation was to purchase some type of equipment for a temperature taking, and then you estimated it might run about twenty five hundred dollars a pop. So that's why I was just kind of trying to guesstimate like what it was that you were referring to. You know that if the budget does pass and there is a surplus, you would be perhaps spending that money on. Um, temperature, you know, taking, you know, material. That's why I was just kind of curious when you said about $2,500. That's why I was figuring maybe it was a full body scan that you were anticipating, not an actual thermometer. It, it, it is not a full body scan. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I was just wondering because I know thermometers really aren't 2500 but, you know, you never know. Okay. So thank you very much. I appreciate it for the clarification. You're very welcome. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions regarding the budget before we move on? Okay. Okay. All right, at this time, I will move to public comments. Uh, the Board of Education will hear public comments that address voting items on tonight's agenda only at this time. Speakers must first identify themselves to the district clerk and then address their comments to the board. Comments by any individual may not exceed three minutes. Due to confidentiality concerns, the board does not permit speakers to raise issues concerning a specific student or a specific personnel matter. Such concerns should be presented to the superintendent after the board meeting. Are there any questions regarding our voting items on tonight's agenda by anyone? Okay, no, no comments. Okay, moving to consent agenda, the approval of minutes for the May 20th, 2020 budget adoption and regular board meeting. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. On to consent agenda number two, the appointment of election inspectors um, for the June 9th, 2020 annual budget vote and election. I will turn that over to Mr. Craig. I, no? I think it's coming to me, but that's-, that's Thank you, Dr. That's Egan, okay. I apologize. That's all right. Um, so it, in, in short, a 100% um, absentee ballot uh, process is uh, a little different than typical. So in, in a typical uh, budget vote in election, we would rent uh, voting machines and we would pay workers to man the polls for an entire day. Um, during this election, we had to mail out all the ballots. It was a different expense, um, but we did not need to rent the machines and we were able to, to um, to designate 16 district employees who are also district residents who will assist with canvassing the ballots that evening. Um, those individuals will not get paid additional for doing that. Um, they're mostly volunteers who work in, in our offices. Um, again, they're all district residents and uh, we, we will be counting um, somewhere between you know, 150 or 15,000 ballots the night of uh, June 9th, uh, depending on how many ballots we, we get back that evening. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Egan. Are there any questions from the board? Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby designates up to 16 school district employees upon the recommendation of the superintendent to serve as election inspectors 
for the processing of the June 9, 2020 school district budget vote and election with no additional compensation. Canvassing the ballots will begin at 5 p.m. at the Kings Park High School cafeteria. Be it further resolved that the Board of Education appoint the district clerk to serve as an election inspector and that Christine Colvin be appointed as chairperson for said budget vote and election. Okay. Okay, on to consent agenda number three, the authorization to sign MOA with BAA regarding the work year. Dr. Egan. All right, this, this is a, a relatively simple agreement with our administrative association. Um, I, I call it a work year fix agreement. Um, essentially, it's, it's necessary because all of our administrators worked through spring break um, and it allows us to, um, to rectify their, their work calendar. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? <clears throat> Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolve that the Board of Education approves the attached memorandum of agreement, MOA, with the Business Administrators Association, the BAA, regarding work year and gives the board president authorization to sign said agreement. Okay, thank you. On to new business voting. Personnel schedule number 17, Mr. Grant. Uh, good evening, Mr. Ford. Uh, for tonight's personnel schedule, we have the retirement of Sharon Donenfeld, a uh, psychologist at Parkview Elementary School. Uh, she's also worked at Kings Park High School, uh, San Remo Fort so long, and she's been in the district for 40 years. Uh, so she started in 1980 and she'll be retiring at the end of the school year. So. Uh, we certainly wish her well, and I know that Parkview is having a car parade for her on June 9th, so we wish Ms. Donenfeld well. Mm, very nice. Uh, also, we have uh, Danielle Thompson for uh, Instructional Technology uh, PD in the summertime for our staff, uh, the appointment of a social worker for our extended school year program, and the appointment of lead teachers for next year at the middle school, high school, and elementary. And that's the personnel schedule for tonight. Okay, thank you, Mr. Craig. I'll make a motion to um, agree, approve. I second. All I in, second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Patty, did you hear Mr. Johnston? Okay. Okay. Next, um, on to the acceptance of recommendation to award electrical connections proposal for RJO gymnasium renovations. Um, Mr. Craig? Yes, yeah, so this resolution was on our last board meeting, May 12th, Mr. Ford, but we had left off the electrical component. Uh, so that's an additional $8,000. So the total cost of bleachers at RJO is now $138,000, inclusive of the electrical work as well. Okay. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Just the similar one that we ask all the time is how are we doing with the uh, <laughs> finances, I guess. Uh, I knew you would ask Mr. Johnson, so that project- well, so Joe, Joe's not here, so. <laughs> <laughs> that project came $87,000 on the budget. So we're doing good. We're doing good. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas district architects and project managers requested and recommended bond project proposals for RJO Intermediate School Gymnasium renovations per Eastern Suffolk BOCES cooperative bid, and whereas district architects are now recommending the inclusion of electrical connections related, therefore now be it resolved that the Kings Park Central School District increase the RJO Intermediate Gym school gymnasium renovations project as listed below. Okay. Next, moving on to 
the acceptance of recommendation to award bond project proposals for ceiling upgrades at Fort Salonga, RJO, William G. Rogers, and Kings Park High School. Mr. Craig. Yes, yeah, so, so this resolution is for uh, part of our summer bond work. It's um, ceiling work at the four schools you had mentioned. Uh, and this is coming $126,991 under budget. Wow. Under, excellent. Under, wow. Okay. Okay, are there any questions from the board? No. Okay, and before making a motion, did everybody get a chance to see? It's Sports Alanga, mm -hmm. RJO, William T. Rogers, and Kings Park High School. Okay, so I will make a motion to accept. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Whereas di district architects and project managers requested bond project proposals for ceiling upgrades at Fort Salong Elementary School, RJO Intermediate School, William T. Rogers Middle School, and King Park High School, per Eastern Suffolk BOCES Cooperative Bid, Electrical Services and Eastern Suffolk BOCES Cooperative Bid, Carpentry Service. Services now therefore be it resolved that the Kings Park Central School District award the following projects per the attached documentation. And regarding this, um, Mr. Craig, do you know on or about the start time? Uh, they'll be starting in July, Mr. Ford. Great. Okay. So everything is still on, still on schedule. Yep. Okay. Awesome. On to the acceptance of recommendation to award bond project proposals to RJO Intermediate School, toilet renovations, and partial roof replacement. Mr. Craig? So, so these are the two lowest bids for uh, work at RJO, as you had mentioned, the toilet renovations and the uh, roof at RJO. Uh, so the toilet renovation came $21,000 under budget, but and the roof, $90,000 under budget as well. So we're very happy with the price we got on the roof. Wow. Excellent. Fantastic. Now, just so this is all part of the bond work and that we're still under budget, um, that's good for the community because we're only paying back what we take out, correct? Uh, Dr. Regan? Or Miss <laughs> Mahan, whoever would like yeah, to answer that. These, these we, costs, we borrowed the oh, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> these costs don't come out of the general fund. Yes. Um, this yeah. was part of the, uh, the multi-step bond borrowing that we've done over the last couple of years. Um, this, this summer is more or less the, the last pieces in the schools. Um, what, what we are going to do after this summer is reevaluate and see if there's any small projects that, that we did miss in the schools. Um, but the, the remaining work is really at um, the San Remo administrative building after this summer. And we'll take yeah. a look at budget and see what we still have left. But the, the big thing is that these costs are not in your typical school budget. That's part of the bond borrowing that we've done over the last couple of years. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make it clear because when we're hearing that we're under budget and people are asking, well, the surplus, it's not in our regular budget, this is the bond. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas at a special district meeting, Julie called and held on December 8th, 2015 in the Kings Park Central School District, District, a majority of the qualified voters present and voting approved a bond preposition authorizing the partial reconstruction and construction of improvements to districts, buildings, and or sites. Therefore, now be it resolved that the Board of Education accepts the recommendation of District Project Managers Park East Construction Corp to award the bid for partial roof replacement and toilet renovations rebid at RJO Intermediate School as follows. Great. Okay, on to new business voting. On to donation of gift. As per district policy, all gifts, all gifts must be um, approved by district. So I will make a motion to accept. I'll second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolved that the Board of Education gracefully accepts the following donations. The Parkview PFA is donating a play safe playground system to Parkview Elementary School. Value of donations $18,751. Total value of donations to date for the 2019-2020 school year is $155,664. Thank you to the PFA. Very nice donation. Okay, on to the acceptance to add verified um, new vendors as per, policy, as per district policy. All vendors must be approved by the board. I will make a motion to accept. A second. All, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolve that the Board of Education accepts a recommendation to add verify new vendors to the approved district vendor list as per attached documentation. Okay. On to the acceptance of tax anticipation note resolution authorizing the insurer of note. Does that go to Ms. Meehan? Meehan? Yes, thank you. This resolution authorized the issuance of tax anticipation notes for the 2021 fiscal year in the amount not to exceed $19 million. Tax anticipation note is required in, because in Suffolk County, we don't re start receiving um, large tax payments until January. So we need a TAN for cash flow purposes to get us through to January. Um, next few months, our treasurer will be completing her cash flow analysis to determine the exact amount we will need to borrow, which won't be more than the 19 million not to exceed amount. Great, okay. Um, has the board have a chance, did have a chance to read the resolution on this item? Yes. 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 So I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Re resolved by the Board of Education of Kings Park Central School District in the County of Suffolk as follows um, on sections one, two, three, four, five, and six. Thank you, Ms. Meehan, for explaining that. Okay, on to the authorization to transfer funds to establish district reserves. Ms. Meehan? Yes, thank you. Annually, the district provides the Board of Education with a resolution that upon passage authorizes fund balance monies to be transferred into reserve accounts at the end of the fiscal year. The resolution authorizes an, authorizes an amount that is a not to exceed transfer amount. This is a prudent practice as certain accounting entries or unforeseen events may occur at the end of the year um, in late June or early July that alter the district's fund balance. And a subsequent resolution will be presented in the fall um, detailing the actual amounts transferred into each respective reserve. So then this again is a not to exceed resolution for transfer amounts. Okay, great. Does anybody from the board have any questions regarding that? Okay, I'll make, a mo I'll make a motion to approve. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas by action of the Board of Education, the Kings Park Central School District has previously established certain reserves. And whereas the district wishes to maintain these reserves as close to fully funded as possible, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes transfers up to the amounts listed below from the 2019-2020 unassigned general fund balance into the previously established reserves as listed below. Thank you, Ms. Meehan. Okay, on to new business voting, pupil personnel, the acceptance of CSC meeting recommendations. Dr. Colby Runner. Good evening. The following will include minutes from 94 Committee on Special Education meetings that were held between the dates of February 13th through May 29th. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the attached individualized educational programs, IEPs, from February 13th, 2020 to May 29th, 2020, 94 in total. And I would also say that more than half those were on Zoom meetings <laughs> due to the situation we're in. <laughs> okay. On to authorization to sign contracts with the service providers. Dr. Colby Rooney. Yes, thank you. The following three contracts will provide related services and mental health support services for students within the Kings Park Central School District. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Be it resolved that the Kings Park, that the Board of Education hereby gives the board president permission to sign the attached contracts with the following service providers for the 2020-2021 school year. Okay, thank you. On to new business voting, the superintendent, the first reading of the modification to policy 3280. Um, Dr. Egan. Okay, um, I, I think uh, the board is aware that we've, we've been trying to strike a balance during the pandemic of keeping our facilities uh, open, our, our fields, our tennis courts, our track, so that our district residents have a place to go um, other than you know, the four walls of their house or walking around the neighborhood. Um, most districts have kept their tracks open, um, but we are one of the few districts that have kept, uh, in particular, the high school fields open. Um, I think our residents have really appreciated that. The downside has been that um, various groups have discovered that Kings Park fields are open, um, perhaps as far away as Wantaw and um, are coming and using our fields. So uh, we've done some research, we've worked with uh, legal counsel and um, I'm recommending that make an addition to the policy. And in, in particular, it's uh, the bold portion that um, is in that, that update that's, that's in board docs that I know you're, you're able to look at. The important part of that is that use of the school's facilities by non-residents shall not be granted except with the express permission of the superintendent of schools and or the Board of Education. Um, since I do not anticipate granting non-residents permission anytime soon, that would mean that only residents could use our fields. Um, so what, what we're prepared to do if the board is happy with, with this change is um, we do have mobile security that is posted to the high school and they have been, been chasing away groups of students. But what they, what they would begin doing tomorrow is they would begin checking IDs. And if an individual did not have a, a Kings Park uh, ID or, or a, a license that had a Kings Park address, they would be denied entry into um, the high school in particular, which has been the problem area. Um, one of the other things that I want to point out for the board is that um, policy 1410, which is essentially your policy on policy, typically the board would do two readings on a policy. Um, however, if, uh, if the board wishes a second reading and complete the adoption of the policy at the first, which would be this evening, um, one benefit of, of doing so would be that the policy change could go into effect tomorrow and you wouldn't have to wait until the Wednesday after the second board meeting in, in June. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Regan. I think under the circumstances, um, I would be in favor of adopting it tonight if the board is in agreement as well to adopt this. Um, this clearly is for the benefit of our community, our residents, our kids. Um, if anybody else from the board 
would like to. I agree as well. Okay. I agree as well. I don't need a second reading. I agree, I agree also. Yes. Um, I, I would like to adopt it tonight. Okay, so, and Mr. Johnston? Yeah, I think it's paramount that we do it right away. Okay. So I will make a motion to um, adopt this policy 3280 tonight. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And like you said, Dr. Egan, this goes in effect immediately for our residents. So just a note to all residents, um, when going to use the field, please have ID with you so that our security guards can identify Kings Park residents. Dr. Egan, um, would it be possible maybe to send out a quick email tomorrow morning just to let people know that they should bring some ID with them? Yeah, what great, great point, Mrs. Nally. What, what I'm going to do is um, tomorrow is, is Wednesday, and it's usually the day that I've done a Q&A update with the community. So I'm going to put this right in my, my Q&A update, and I'll make sure to get that out first thing tomorrow morning. Great, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, on, on any special reports and announcements from Dr. Regan? Yeah, just, just a couple of quick ones. Um, number one, that um, we will be mailing out the typical postcard that go to students. Um, legally, it needs to go out in English and Spanish now. Um, so that's, that's why you, you will see it um, in Spanish as well. And those should get mailed out tomorrow. That's a, that's a legal requirement that all districts need to do. And in addition, we have posted the typical budget brochure in both English and Spanish to our website. So if we have residents that want to access uh, the, the typical information that in years past we would mail home in terms of a, a multi-page uh, pamphlet. We went to online posting last year because of the new requirement that um, we have to put that together in both English and, and in Spanish. Um, on, a, on a positive note, a cu couple of uh, fun things coming up later this week. We have... Um, senior awards, which are going to be delivered to our seniors. We have, I believe, 113 seniors who would have received senior awards on senior awards night at the high school. Um, we have a, a bus that is ready to roll. Uh, we were hoping to use the bus that you see behind me. Um, there really is no bus behind me. It's a virtual background. I'm sitting in my office. Um, we can't use that bus because of some of the roads that we need to navigate in Kings Park. Um, but all day on Thursday and Friday morning, we're gonna be making, um, we, we have a couple of twins, so it's not quite 113 stops, but it's somewhere around 110 stops around uh, Kings Park and we'll have some photo moments and we're really looking forward to that. Uh, we, we did reschedule graduation for July 29th with rain dates of the 30th and the 31st. Um, I'm super hopeful that uh, we're going to be able to, to do that and have an in-person graduation. That would certainly be everybody's uh, want. And honestly, I think we could pull that off with, uh, with some social distancing and it would be completely safe. The, um, the, thing, the thing that is the limiting factor is the size of the group that we're able to bring together at that point in time. Um, in, order, in order to do a full graduation, the magic number would need to be about 1,000. If you figure 300 graduates and two invites a piece and um, you know, some, some, other, some other adults. So um, if we're able to pull that off, that would be absolutely wonderful. But it, at this point, it's really, what the governor and the local health department will allow us to do in terms of a gathering. Plan B would be we would split the graduating class in, in half and we would, we would try to do two evenings. The magic number there is 500. So if we're able to assemble lawfully 500 people in one place, that might be a plan B. 
Um, and we do have a plan C and a plan D. Uh, but again, my, my hope is that A will be the one that, that we're able to do. And I honestly do think that we could pull that off. It's, it's just being able to lawfully uh, assemble that many people in one place. And just a reminder that because um, instruction did continue through the spring recess, that the last day of school is seven days earlier than, than originally planned. Uh, we updated the district calendar at a previous meeting, but um, I just thought I would remind parents that June 17th is the last day of, of school uh, for the 2019-2020 school year. And I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Dr. Egan. Um, just to you know, remind everyone, and I know you've said it, um, the plannings that are in place for graduation right now, we're under exec order, and that's where our hands are tied as a board. Um, but thank you for explaining that to everyone, that things are being planned, backup plans, um, and we're hoping for the best. But right now, it's even out of our control of what we can do. Um, but I do know um, other things are planned for our seniors. Um, so that's a good thing, too. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything to say? A couple, couple quick ones, uh, Mrs. DeFord. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, I'm glad we're able to do something for the senior awards. I know it's not ideal. Uh, because that, that was one of my favorite uh, events uh, every, every year in the, on the school calendar. So I'm glad we're going to uh, go through that. Mrs. Uh, Harris, the secretary, uh, who's done a marvelous job putting this together. This was a lot, a lot, a lot of work every year. However, this year there were even more challenges um, uh, due to the circumstances. Uh, but that being said though, congratulations to all our seniors um, on their awards. And then I'd like to thank the uh, members of the band that uh, performed uh, at the Memorial Day uh, ceremony as abbreviated and uh, uh, as it was, okay? So uh, thank you to them. And uh, Mrs. LaFontana was there also. Yes. It was small, yeah. but still powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay, this time we'll go to public comments again for the remaining time of the original 30 minutes. <laughs> the Board of Education will hear additional public comments. Please follow the procedures outlined for the, for the public comment sessions earlier in this meeting. In addition, please note that the board will take no action at tonight's meeting. Are there any public comments from anyone at this time? Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll move on to important dates at this time. As Dr. Regan has said, our Tuesday, June 9th is the budget vote and election. The certification of results will time will be announced um, on that day. Also Tuesday, June 16th is our next board meeting. Um, via Zoom conferencing at 7.30 p.m. You'll find the link on our website. Um, I know we have the last meeting before the last day of school, but as we're all winding down, um, I can speak as a parent. Um, it's been very difficult for all our students, all our teachers, administrators, but on a whole, I would just like to thank um, everyone in this district for being part of doing everything that we have come together to do. And that's not only, I'm not talking about education, I'm talking about providing for each other, helping one another. We've had food drives that have um, doubled in what we've previously done. Um, I know um, teachers were involved with that. Um, I do see one on Robin. Thank you. Um, I know at um, Mrs. Um, is escaping my mind right now. McGinley. There were so many. Mrs. McGinley. McGinley. Thank you. Kim McGinley. Um, 
so many, the, the amount of food that was taken in was unbelievable. And that's for our community here. So, you know, we provided lunches for many children in this district. Um, we delivered many things to, to kids. So I am just <clears throat> very honored and proud to be part of this district um, and to thank everybody from Dr. Egan to this cabinet, to administrators, teachers, um, teacher assistants and teacher aides who are helping out in various jobs right now during this time, our bus drivers for doing all that they're doing, custodians um, for doing the extra cleaning, during sure. grounds people. If I left anybody out, I apologize. Um, but you know, I always say it takes a village and um, this is a pretty strong village and, and I'm proud of it. So thank you everyone. Um, just continue to stay safe, be healthy. Vote. And vote. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, I am not an employee of the district. So I would, I, I am encouraging you um, to support our kids. Um, the budget is a sound budget. As you know, we've adopted it, we've approved it. Um, nothing is being taken away from our kids. Um, nothing that directly impacting education. Um, the one big thing that Dr. Egan spoke about was our Chromebook initiative. It was only gonna be for you know, two or three grade levels as we rolled it out, but now we're going to seven through 12. Um, and we have the means to do it and it's benefiting our kids. So I think that's um, very nice and um, in the right direction for our kids. So thank you for your support. Anybody else would like to say anything? Okay, I'm gonna make a motion to go into exec to discuss personnel matters. A second. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, we will be back here on June 16th. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.